Okay, let's look at a group of organic compounds called alkanols, which are more commonly known as alcohols. So they're organic molecules that contain the COH group, or what we call a hydroxy group. So let's have a look at some examples. Our simplest alkanol is a CH3. One of the hydrogens is substituted by our hydroxy group, or our OH group, so we get this molecule. If we expand this out, we've got our carbon, three hydrogens, oxygen single bonded to the carbon, single bonded to a hydrogen. And this molecule is known as methanol. So we substitute the E and add the OL to the end of methane. Our second most simple alkanol is a CH3, CH2, OH group. Expand it out, a CH3, CH2, single bonded O, single bonded H, and we get ethanol. So we drop the E and add OL as our suffix. Our third, third most simple um, alcohol or alkanol is a CH3, CH with an OH group, and then another CH3. We could also draw the OH on a terminal carbon, but in this case I've drawn it on the second carbon. So we have CH3, CH, and there should be another H in there. Our single bonded oxygen to hydrogen, and we call this one 2-propanol. So it's propane, three carbons. Position number two has our OH group or our hydroxy group, so we call it 2-propanol. So how do we name alkanols or alcohols? Well, there are really two rules. First one is find the longest carbon chain that contains the hydroxy group or the OH group and replace the suffix, the E, on the end of our alkane with the suffix ol, as we've done for our first three molecules. We've also got to take in, into consideration that our hydroxy group or our OH group has the lowest possible number. So our molecule down here is a hexane with an OH group. We look for the lowest possible numbering system for that OH group. So we go one, two, position number three. So this one is going to be three hexane. We drop the E and add OL. So we get three hexanol. So let's have a look at some properties of our alkanols. In general, they have a higher melting point and boiling point than our alkanes due to different intermolecular forces. Our alkanes have very few intermolecular forces, and typically we only find London dispersion forces, which are very weak. Therefore, our alkanes have very low melting and boiling points. On the other hand, our alkanols, because of that OH group, can have hydrogen bonding between OH or sorry, the um, slightly negative aspect of our oxygen in our OH group, and another H that's bonded to either an OH or an H on the alkane. They're also, they have varying degrees of solubility. So if we look at carbon number one to four for our alkanol, these are soluble, soluble in water. And that OH group provides that solubility. On the other hand, our carbon 5 to 8 are only slightly soluble, and 8 is much less soluble than our pentanol, for instance. And this is because as the carbon chain increases, it decreases solubility. So that when we get to carbon number 9 or higher, they're very low or insoluble in water. So how do we prepare our alkanols? Well, the most, or the simplest way, and the way that's been done for thousands of years, is to use a fermentation reaction. So typically we would use a sugar, such as glucose, and it would have been, or yeast would have been put in the presence of our glucose or sugar, and we would produce two molecules of ethanol. And as a, a secondary product, we'd also produce carbon dioxide. So this is an anaerobic, or what we call an anaerobic um, reaction, doesn't need oxygen, but it produces carbon dioxide as a byproduct. Now, in the last 150 years, we've also 
um, developed techniques to produce alcohols synthetically, or what we call inside a lab. So if we want to produce the most simple alcohol or alkanol, we, we take carbon dioxide, we add hydrogen to it, and we heat that up, and we'll form methanol, or our simplest alkanol. Now we can also have another type of reaction where we take an alkene, in this case we've got ethene, we add water to it in the presence of an acidic solution and we can form ethanol. And this is how ethanol is produced um, synthetically. So if we're not going to ferment sugar to create the ethanol, we can create it in a lab by undergoing this process. Now we can write the generalised version of this particular reaction by putting our R, so this is a, a terminal um, CH to CH, or sorry, terminal carbon to carbon double bond attached to another R group. We add our water to it and we form our alkanol out of it. Now, if we notice, this has to follow Markovnikov's rule, so our hydroxy group isn't going to be a terminal hydroxy group. Instead, we're going to produce it on the second carbon in. Now that's important because um, it's much easier to produce secondary alcohols, as we'll look at in a second, than primary alcohols. So what do I mean by primary and secondary alcohols? We've got three molecule or three possible molecules here, all have our OH group in them, but they're different in structure. In the first example, we have our OH group on a terminal carbon, and because it's on a terminal carbon, we call that a primary alcohol, and we denote it with a one and a, a degree symbol. Now we can also have an alcohol that's on a secondary carbon, so an intermediate carbon here, we've got one R group coming off that carbon, we've got another R group coming off that carbon, and we've got our OH group coming off as well. And we'll also have a hydrogen coming off that particular carbon too. So this is what we call a secondary alcohol, and in this case we've got two propanol, but you'll notice I've got a hydrogen coming off that second carbon. So this is called a secondary alcohol, and we denote that with the two and the little um, superscript zero up there as well. Of course we can get what's called a tertiary alcohol, so the carbon that has our hydroxy or alcohol group off it doesn't contain any hydrogens, instead it has three different carbon chains, or sorry, it can have three different carbon chains, they could all be the same, but they can't be hydrogens, because if they were hydrogens, we would actually have our primary alcohol again. So in this case, we've got our carbon bonded to three different types of carbons, and we get what's called a tertiary alcohol or tertiary alkanol, and we denote that with a three and our superscripted zero. Because we can get different types of alcohols, they can set up different types of reactions. So for instance, if we have all three of our um, alcohols, we have our primary, secondary and tertiary, and we try to oxidise each one of those, so we use either potassium permanganate or, or a chromate ion in, in the presence of um, an acid, so we get an acidified oxidising agent, our primary alcohol will give us a terminal carbon double bonded to an oxygen group which is called an alkanal group. And this particular one, we can reoxidize it to give us a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and to another OH group, in which case we get what's called an alkanoic acid or carboxylic acid. Our secondary alcohol, on the other hand, if we oxidize it, using an oxidizing agent just as we did in the first one, will produce not a terminal carbon oxygen double bond, but an intermediate carbon-oxygen double bond. So we don't produce what's called an alkanal, instead we produce what's called an alkanone, or better known as a ketone. Now we can't oxidise this one any further, so that's our final product. 
our first reaction, we could oxidise the alkanal to give us the alkanoic acid. Now our, our tertiary alcohol, on the other hand, if we try to oxidise it using the same process, we find that we don't get any reaction. 